Hello and welcome to the stories of Northern Life from the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Thank you so much for being here. With every episode, you are learning a little more about Sault Ste. Marie history and gaining a greater appreciation of our Northern community, the moments, the people, and the places. The Sioux Museum is here to preserve your history, but also to share it in as many engaging and entertaining ways as we can. Your support and engagement with our content keeps the cycle going and allowing us to expand and grow, offering more back to you, our community. So thank you. Season two of the Stories of Northern Life podcast is coming soon. Until then, we are resharing a few episodes over the past two years. That's 100 episodes that we love and think that you will too. Hello and welcome to the Stories of Northern Life from the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Over the years, we lost a lot of great historic buildings, monuments, and what would have been artifacts today due to terrible fires, catching a spark by surprise. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, fires were more pervasive because most buildings were constructed of wood, a highly flammable material. With the introduction of electrical wiring, there was a possibility of faulty wiring causing fires, which was the case of the destruction of our first city hall, Carnegie Public Library and Fire Hall structure in 1907. So in 1889, the first volunteer fire department came to be. Quite late in my opinion, our neighbors of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan started their fire service in 1884. Our side's volunteer department was equipped with hand reels and water buckets. But even with that, they had a hand in making a difference in putting out fires in our city. During that same year, on September 4th, the city purchased a steam fire engine along with two hand reels and a 1,000 feet fire hose at a cost of $6,200. Thus, needing a fire hall to be built to house all of the new equipment. And the station was built on Laundry's lot on McDougall Street. The Smoke Eaters, as the firefighters were nicknamed, had a lot of grievances in 1890. The main grief was the lack of rubber coats. They never did get enough of them for the number of new men, as well as the lanterns were lacking in numbers, and the fire hall was in much need of repairs. There was also a matter of obstructions in the city that were in the way of attending fires. Rocks obstructed the tank at the fort, and the posts on Bay Street were such a nuisance. The brigade threatened to resign until they actually did in March 1981. In response, William Howard Hurst helped form a new volunteer fire brigade. These firefighters were paid 50 cents for the first hour at a fire and 40 cents for each succeeding hour. They were paid 25 cents for false alarms too. In 1892, a new horse-drawn engine was purchased. Horse-drawn equipment was still used until 1938, even alongside motorized fire trucks. Half the time, they would not start in the cold weather or get stuck in the snow. So the horse-drawn equipment would have to follow along too, just in case. It wasn't until 1913 the first motorized truck arrived and it was not long in its new home until it had to go out on its first mission. The truck left the fire hall on Queen Street, proceeding to Mayor Simpson's store, then to Pym Street, up Pym along Great Northern Road, back by the Bruce Hill route. The whole distance was covered in 13 minutes. The truck engine was air coolest weather and developed 80 horsepower, making a speed of 35 miles per hour. On January 10th, 1916, a fire began in the Sioux International Hotel elevator shaft. Exactly how it was started seems to be unknown, but it was poor timed for one to happen. Not only did typical January weather make it difficult for firefighters to use their hoses, the fire location made it difficult for them to even reach the hotel. 
It is also said that there was a strong wind on that night, which helped fan the flames even more. Despite the best efforts of the responders, the International Hotel sadly burned to the ground, with only a few walls and some items inside surviving the blaze. In 1920, the fire department relied almost exclusively on mechanical trucks. But like I said, when the weather was questionable, the wagon and team followed in case a truck became stuck in the mud or snow. As the city grew, so did the fire department, with more and more station houses and equipment. In 1952, the East End Hall was built just a year after the West End Hall was built, as an exact replica. It housed one truck along with the more modern equipment. Three men worked each of the three eight-hour shifts to provide the city's rapidly growing East End with more efficient and adequate fire protection. The hall remained in use till 1990. In 1953, the fire department purchased its first aerial ladder pump truck. It weighed 24,000 pounds and came equipped with a water tower having three feeders into a single main hose that would put out 1,100 gallons of water per minute. As equipment and trucks improved over the years, the Sioux Fire Department kept up with progress. They incorporated new training programs and routines, like training for if, if getting down from a building with a ladder was impossible, the crew would use a lifeline and a life belt to lower a fireman from the top of the building to the ground. The next dramatic change in improvements over the department wasn't until 1991, when a fireboat was launched for the first time. Then in 1902, the fire department received a second rescue boat, a Yankee airboat that was used for water and ice rescue. In recent times, there are still fires happening all the time caused by various reasons, but the fire department is always there to come to the rescue to protect and minimize fire damages. In 2014, Reggie's downtown was caught on fire and did some pretty bad damage. In 2019, a terrible fire took eight apartments and two businesses downtown. The fire department arrived at 5 a.m. calling more than 20 firefighters to the scene, but the flames were so intense they couldn't go into the building, and due to the frigid temperatures, hoses and breathing apparatuses froze. This was a tricky one for the fire department. In September 2022, Bonifero Millwork on Third Line West had a fire start from a stray spark from work that was occurring in the building at the time. The fire department was able to put out this small fire pretty quickly. There are so many significant fires that have occurred in Sault Ste. Marie over the years, some with heartbreaking stories, but some with little damage due to the Sioux Fire Department. But every time the fire department gets out, you know that they put their full effort forward all of these fires just go to show that even with upgrades in technology in our buildings and homes, the Sioux Fire Department is still very needed. And we all know there are little things we can do in the prevention of fires as well. We all appreciate their skills and service to the city. Thank you to all the volunteers and employees from the Sioux St. Marie Fire Department from 1889 till today. Thank you for keeping us safe and minimizing damage of our homes and businesses. Come back again next week for another special episode of the Stories of Northern Life from the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to follow the Sioux Museum on Instagram or Facebook to get the most up-to-date information on what we are up to and more Sault Ste. Marie history, of course. Season 2 is coming. So stay tuned.